there's something else which is actually quite nice about being out here in that there is no phone signal. And I love it. My entire life is online, connected, always updating social media, getting back to emails, planning next projects. But out here, it's me, the car, and the mountains. And I think moments like this, you should really savour, because if anything, I think in this day and age, we're sort of overly connected, aren't we? Listen to that. Yeah, not a sound. Welcome to Scotland. And welcome to the beautiful lake and marshland that sits between Stirling and Glencoe. Today, we're gonna to take the Aston Martin DBS for its first drive. I shall explain more about that to you when we get in the car. But first of all, let me just point you at what I'm looking at right now. Look at this. It's silent, it's vast, it's expansive. And just over here, we have a beautiful road that cuts through it and a DBS to cut through it with. Fun fact, what we're actually walking on here is peat. Now, dirty as it may be, the Scots use peat to burn in malted barley. And that gives peat whiskey its sort of extra smoky flavour. Learned that once coming up here on a uh, whiskey tasting adventure out towards St Andrews. Funny what I get up to. Anyway! Less of peat and whiskey, more of this. Okay, so let me just briefly introduce you to the car for the benefit of anybody just joining the channel or hasn't had time to catch up on the DBS joining the channel so far. Uh, this is a 2008 model Aston Martin DBS. Significant because between 2008 and 9 is the only time that they made manual DBS and that really is what attracted me to the entire car, the notion of a naturally aspirated manual V12. Speaking of the engine, as I mentioned, NA V12 six litre developing 510 horsepower. Now this car has a lot of carbon fiber components, some of which you can't see. For example, the bonnet and the boot lid are carbon fiber. But if I come around to the diffuser, that is very much a pronounced section of carbon fiber here. Now the sculpture on this car, despite the fact that it was based on the DB9 platform, every single body panel except for the doors is exclusive to this car. And I think one of the most iconic things about it is of course, the way that the car looks. The sculpture, I think anyway, aesthetically, it's come full circle. It's a timeless car now. It's got such presence, but it's still maintained the elegance synonymous with Aston Martin. Now, of course, one of the reasons we're up here in this particular car is of course, we're on the road to Skyfall and this was launched uh, in the Casino Royale James Bond film. So it's brilliant to bring the DBS up here and explore one of the uh, famous James Bond roads which ultimately led to Skyfall. More on that when we get in the car. Speaking of in the car, let me just show you in here because this is really what it's all about. That there, the manual six speed transmission, three pedals, brake pedal connected to standard fit carbon ceramic brakes. I shall touch on the significance of those shortly, but all in all, it's still that refined Grand Tourer, only it's kind of turned up to 11 and it's got a lot more vocal cords coming out of the exhaust. The engine and throttle response is a little bit sharper and all in all, it's just taken that beautiful Grand Tourer platform of DB9 and elevated it to something quite spicy. to the interior of the Aston Martin DBS. Now I'm, I don't know, I've got quite an emotional feeling about today. Uh, I've got various memories of Scotland. One of the most recent, which was actually about 18 months ago now, is when I was uh, presenting a TV show for Michelin. And we were out here and it was actually in the summer. Now, by pure circumstance, we ended up filming on what is known as the road 
Skyfall. Now, as it happens in the James Bond film, well, that house that was Skyfall doesn't actually exist. However, the road that supposedly led to it does. And I was out there 18 months ago filming on there, and I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be great to come back here on my own time and just immerse myself in the great driving roads around here. And we all love a bit of cheese, don't we? And I thought, let's go down there and recreate that photo. You know, the iconic photo of the DB5 parked on that, that Skyfall road with James Bond or Daniel Craig looking down the Glen. Well, fast forward 18 months later, never in a million years did I think I would be returning in my own Aston Martin. Was that, this, was, this was not part of the plan. The DBS for me has always been a modern classic on the dream car list. However, I didn't expect to be actually owning one. Feel that talk. What a machine. So today, we're having a bit of a hybrid journey. Hybrid in that this is going to effectively be the first drive video where I introduce you to the DBX in a proper dynamic driving environment. Scotland has some of, if not the best driving roads in the UK, but I also thought let's play on a bit of James Bond nostalgia by ultimately taking it for the first drive and ending up on that Skyfall road for that photo. But amazingly and importantly, we still have the ambience of autumn winter in Scotland without the rain and without the slippery roads, which is great in this car because it's 510 horsepower to the rear wheels alone. It has a lot of torque available immediately from get-go. You don't have to ride the revs of this car in order to make it go. There's so much available low-down torque. Six litre, naturally aspirated V12, importantly delivered through a six-speed manual gearbox. What I found with this car is that you don't actually have to drive it fast to enjoy it. Now, not to do this car a disservice in any way, but I don't think I've ever had so much fun going slowly. <laughs> it's just a really beautiful thing in which to cruise and waft along. It sounds great at pretty much any speed. Now, don't get me wrong, if you want to, you can drop a few cogs like so, and it will do the speed thing. <laughs> like so. Wow, before you know it, you're looking down at the speedo thinking I should probably anchor onto those carbon ceramic brakes. Fun fact, this is the first production Aston Martin that came with carbon ceramics as standard fitment. Previous cars, they were available as optional extras, but standard fit, DBS was the first. <laughs> a bumpy road there. And as a result, the way this thing comes to a stop is fabulous. Now let's just talk about the way the car makes you feel, because for me, and this isn't just Aston Martins, this is about sports cars, supercars, super GTs like this. You know, we don't need any of these things, but they enhance our lives, they're fun, they're beautiful, and I think the way it makes you feel is such a massively important part of the experience. And for me, even before you've got inside this car, and I think this might be true of Aston Martins in general, just on the approach, holding that key, which at the time of developing this, Aston was going through full cheese mode, and the key wasn't a key, it was called an ECU. No, it's not engine control unit, that's emotion control unit. I know, peak cheese. However, I have to hand it to them. There's theatre about this car. You insert this crystal key. The back of the key is actually crystal with this beautiful Aston Martin logo that pops through it and shines at you as you insert it in that dash. The V12 roars to life. And in this car, this was important to me that it was a manual DBS. There's nothing wrong with the autos. It's just during that generation, you know, these are basically 10-year-old cars. During that generation of gearbox, they were, well, how do I put it? Crap. <laughs> they were really lazy gearboxes, lethargic and slow, and that's fine if you just want to amble on on long Grand Tour journeys, but when you get on roads like this, there's beautiful tight turns, there's braking zones where you want to work your way down through the box, and importantly, the car does what you want it to do when you ask it to, so it holds on to the gears. And there's a reward about this heel-toe downshift. One criticism I will say about this car is standard. The pedal placement for heel-toe is atrocious. You can fit your whole foot between the brake pedal and the throttle pedal. So that's something I'm looking to uh, augment as time goes on with this car. 
less of that right now. Let's immerse ourselves in these roads. Now then, something else which is actually beautifully refined on the DBS is the ride quality. Because the car, yes, it's fast, it's a more aggressive, lightweight, well, I wouldn't say lightweight as a inherent nature of this car, but lighter weight version of the DB9. The way it rides, it's suspension, it's damping, it's beautiful. It glides over these Scottish roads with such grace, you could sworn it was developed on this road itself. The way that it deals with both sharper, stubbier bumps in the road, irons them out, it's not crashy, and then the undulations, those slower flowing dips and crests, it floats over those with ease, and as a result, it really is that Grand Tourer. However, because it's got revised engine, it lets, woo -hoo -hoo. one thing it does have is copious amounts of torque and tires that I don't think are quite up to the job until you've got some temperature in them. So I will play around with some tires as time goes on. I'd love to find out what a set of Michelin PS4S feels like on this car. When the tarmac is cold and you don't have any temperature in it, you've got to be really on your game in this car. It is sort of last of the organic, last of the old school. It still has hydraulic steering rack, so steering feel is well weighted with plenty of feedback. Once you get temperature into it, great, but until then, on a day like this, I mean, it's five degrees outside, which to be fair for Scotland in November, pretty good, but still, for these tires, not the best. And this for me is where the manual gearbox comes into play because I actually enjoy changing gear for no reason at all. There's absolutely no reason for me to be changing gear because there's so much torque other than for pure personal indulgence. I love it. It's got quite a long travel throttle, which is quite helpful to modulate all of that torque. But if you give it a deep stab of the right foot, you better have your, your game in check because this thing will step out before you can say, oh, shit. be a little tricky to find because a lot of these stopping places and laybys all kind of look the same but that's the main that's the primary mountain in the shot of the scene this is a little bit early actually it's a bit further down but there's all of these stopping and passing places because as you can see it's it's single track so there's all these little places but you have to drop further down the glen and then it really opens up and we're gonna get that shot okay 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 this Look, you've got a really good view down the valley. I've got a feeling. Is this it? It's very similar. Very similar. Let's have a look. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look and see. Uh... That's kind of similar, right? Similar. I mean, that's kind of similar for yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so it turns out that's not it. I do actually have found an interesting photo online of the director or one of the producers stood on a little mound looking across the valley and there's a little bridge that you get like a tiny little bridge that you can see on the road let's go find that okay it's way further down the road than you think now these are the rocks that I identify that they stand next to and the director's shot is next to that little bridge and that is what helped me find the spot when I show you outside it looks like an off-road course it's not it's not the location I imagined but now I'm here just look at it so just see there little bridge there it is little bridge and the director's bridge is just here and he stood on a rock about there so there's our moss covered rocks here this is the shot so there we have it found the spot honestly at first it takes it takes a little bit of adapting to to actually qualify that this is it but with some reference of photos i think it's worked out well and actually the weather 
isn't dissimilar. There was a little bit more fog sat in the valley there, but it's so cool to bring this thing here. So there we have it, incredible day with an incredible car. Honestly, it's quite surreal taking it to that road that's so famous. It was quite fun hunting it down. If it wasn't for the photo, we wouldn't have found it. Uh, so if you do decide to come to this road to look for it yourself, it's much further down than you might think. Obviously on the journey there, we touched on the uh, driving characteristics and dynamics of the car. I'd love to hear your feedback below with regards to the manual version versus the auto and all of the things that this car stands for. Uh, but we're up here. Scottish Highlands, we're up here for quite a, a while with a good selection of cars. So while you're in the comments, let us know what else you'd like to see. It's about to get dark. Clocks have gone back, which means dark early here in the UK. So I'm going to crack on and head back down because I've got to get the next video out. As always, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you next time. Ciao.